once again everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here if this is your first time joining me today hi hello i am hannah um as you well know from my introduction intro thing and my channel name why am i talking about this i don't know i recently got a comment of someone telling me that i should like shorten my videos and talk faster and more competently and you know that'd be great advice but it will never work for me i am a rambler in the words of the allman brothers i'm a rambling man but anyway different meaning anyways as you guys know the reason that you clicked on this video i'm going to be talking about the mysterious extremely mysterious disappearance of disappearance wow disappearance of Cynthia Anderson so as usual got my notes here I'm gonna tell you guys about this hopefully we can you know help out so anyway we're gonna get into this Cynthia Jane Anderson was born on February 4th of 1961 she lived with her parents and she actually lived with her parents up until the point that she disappeared so, well, I mean, she disappeared when she was pretty young. She was 20 years old. I'm about to turn 20, so about my age. And at the time of her disappearance, she worked at a local law firm as a legal secretary. And the really strange part about this disappearance is that she was almost done working at this law office. She only had about... 10 or so days remaining and then she was going to start Bible college and she was going to start her classes there. She was described as a devout Christian. She had a lot of friends. She had a boyfriend. So like her life was going pretty good and you know that wouldn't lead you to believe that she would run away or anything like that. Anyway, let's continue. So that's a little bit about Cynthia. She was pretty popular, devout Christian, about to start Bible college, a lot of good things going for her. So, I have these bullet points because it's just a weird, strange situation. I talk with my hands. Hi. So, on August 4th of 1981, Cynthia went into work at the law firm in Toledo, Ohio. By the way, that's where she lived, or that's where she worked, in Toledo, Ohio. And she was a legal secretary, like I said, and everybody described this day as being just like any other day. She went in, a lot of people saw her go into work. Um, she went in, you know, got her stuff together, started working. I guess she was like one of the first people who would get there in the mornings and other people would just kind of file in later through the day. But the strange part is that a lot of people recall seeing her around 9.45 that morning. And, but then when people would call the law office to try to, you know, get somebody on the phone to help them, um, around 10 o'clock that morning, they never got a response. So something had to have happened within those 15 minutes there because people did see her around 945, but then at 10 o'clock she wasn't answering the phone. So, you know, something, something had to happen in that time period. So when people discovered that Cynthia was missing, it was actually because the owners of the law firm, the, I guess you would just call them the owners, her bosses, when they got there, they realized, you know, Cynthia's not here, what's going on? And her purse was missing, uh, her car keys were missing, but her car was still in the parking lot and the doors were locked. So it just kind of makes you wonder what happened because the doors were locked her purse was gone her car keys were gone but the car was still there there was no evidence of foul play there was no evidence of anything it was as if she had just got up and walked out but the doors were locked so i don't know but the really really strange part about this disappearance is that when a man named mr rabbit who is one of the attorneys at the firm when he went over to look at Cynthia's desk to see if there was anything like a note or something, like if she would step out, she would leave a note. But all that he found was the romance novel that she had been reading, and it was actually open to the only violent scene in the entire book. And it, the, in that scene, what happens is the main character gets abducted at knife point. 
So, what's kind of strange to me is that Mr. Rabbit said, that's a funny name, but when Mr. Rabbit said that he's found this, he knew, quote, she wasn't coming back. So, that's a little bit ominous to me. I mean, it is weird that the book was open to that, and it might have been a clue that Cynthia was trying to leave, but we don't know for sure. A lot of people say that she probably faked her death or faked her disappearance or whatever because it was open to that page. But I'm kind of wondering if, you know, if she did get abducted, maybe she was trying to leave a clue for people and people just thought, she left of her own accord, which why would she do that? She had Bible college coming up. She had a boyfriend. She had a lot of friends. Everything was going good in her life. So why would she just up and disappear? Police believed this to be a situation in which foul play was involved pretty much immediately, um, mainly because it was such mysterious circumstances and also because the city was experiencing a huge, like, insane volume of crime at this time. Like, they were actively looking for specific murderers, serial killers. There was a lot of crime happening during the time when Cynthia went missing in the city. So, police immediately just thought, you know, something had to have gone wrong here. They, like me, don't understand why she would get up and just decide to leave. That doesn't make sense. So, immediately they thought foul play was involved. And, also strange, um, in the weeks leading up to Cynthia's disappearance, she had received a number of threatening and just malicious phone calls to the office. And they were directed personally to her, so they were, like, threatening her. So, she actually had a buzzer installed in her desk to where she could hit it and it would notify the police that something was going on. She also kept the doors to the office locked for this reason. Sadly, though, no body, no evidence, nothing has ever been found of Cynthia. We don't know what happened to her. It's just there's a lot of speculation, and it's just really strange. She left a lot of money in her bank account. She, her social security number has never been used since she disappeared. None of the money has ever been withdrawn or, t like, no money's been put in, nothing of that nature. So it's just very, very strange that nothing has been found of Cynthia. Like no evidence, no body, nothing. Just nothing. And possibly the saddest part about this is that Cynthia's father never ever gave up hope to find her in the whole time that he lived. He did die in 2008 and sadly he never found out what happened to his daughter while he was alive but he never changed addresses, he never changed his phone number, he kept everything exactly the same as when Cynthia was at home just in case she wanted to call him or come home or something of that nature if she did run off or decide to leave. He was hoping that, you know, she would try to come home or she would try to call. So it's just really sad that he died without ever knowing what happened to his daughter definitively. Um, and there is a lot of speculation about what could have happened to Cynthia. Um, a lot of people think that maybe she overheard too much of a case, um, mainly because a man that she worked with, an attorney by the name of Richard Neller, he worked in the office that Cynthia worked at, and one of his clients was convicted of you know, he was a drug dealer. He was dealing drugs. And so it is speculated that Cynthia may have overheard too much of the conversation and she just knew too much and something had to be done with her. Now, I don't know if there's any merit to this. Nobody has any definitive proof. It's all speculation, just like I said. Another popular theory is that she just up and left. She decided to leave and start a new life somewhere else. But I don't really like that theory. I don't feel like that's accurate. In a lot of these cases, I just don't feel like the people who disappeared would just up and leave. Like, they're not people who are struggling financially 
or socially or anything of that nature. They're just normal people living their lives. Like I don't feel like they would just suddenly wake up one day and decide, hey, I think I'm gonna leave my whole life behind. Leave no evidence, no note, nothing. I'm just gonna skedaddle and go start a life somewhere else under an assumed name. I don't feel like that would happen in most of these cases. Um, especially not in this one with all of the things that Cynthia had going on boyfriend, friends, Bible college soon. Like, I just don't feel like it would happen. Plus, things are just way too suspicious. Um, harassing phone calls, getting that buzzer installed, doors locked, car is still outside, but the car keys are gone. Purse is missing. Like, why would someone take the car keys and not the car? Why? I don't, that doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. It doesn't make sense that she just got up and left. Like, I don't believe that. And no money's ever been withdrawn. Never used her social security number again. If she ran away, I guarantee that there would be some paper trail, something, some way to find her. Sadly, this is pretty much all we know about this case. As usual, I will leave some links below with some more sources, some more information that you guys can check out if you would like to. And of course, as usual, I am going to read off the numbers that you can call if you know anything, if you think you know anything, if you think you saw anything. Um, dial these numbers and you could potentially help bring Cynthia's family some kind of closure or even bring Cynthia home if she is still out there. So I'm going to read the numbers now for the Toledo Police Department. You can call 419-245-3151. That's 419-245-3151. Or you can also call 419-245-3111. That's 419-245-3111. And again, if you have any information at all, I urge you to call the Toledo Police Department and anonymously report what you know. Any little bit helps. Every little bit, every little bit helps. If I could talk, that'd be great. Um, we just want to help these families, and that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys again so, so much for joining me again today. Leave me a like if you like this video. Comment down below. But please do be respectful to Cynthia and her family. Please don't leave any nasty comments about them. You can leave comments about me. I don't really care. And obviously, you can leave positive comments about them. Anything, just if you put something nasty about Cynthia or her family, I will delete it because I don't want that. So anyway... Um, subscribe if you like this video. You can see more videos like this and like other things. I make other videos too, but true crime is a passion of mine, so I do make videos like this pretty regularly. But anyway, I make, vi <laughs> I make new videos Mondays and Fridays. See you guys next time. Bye!